In this video, I'll show you how you can evaluate the sensitivity of the results from your decision tree to the values of different inputs. So right now I'm in model decision analysis, and what you're looking at is the default decision tree that you'll see when you open up this tool. So we have a name assigned to our decision tree, sign contract. It starts with a decision. In this case, whether someone will sign with a movie company or sign with a TV network. If they sign with a TV network, they are assured a payoff of 900,000. If, however, they sign with a movie company, there's a chance that they're going to see a small box office, medium box office, or large box office. And depending on the outcome, their payoffs will differ. So if there's a small box office, they get 200,000, large box office, a million, uh, sorry, medium box office, one million, large box office, three million. And there are some probabilities associated with the chances of having a small box office, medium box office, large box office. Okay. Now, in addition, there's some costs associated with the decision to sign with a movie company because the, the legal uh, document that's going to assign payoffs depending on the outcome of the box office, let's say it's a bit more complicated, and so there's a, a legal fee of $5,000. Okay. So this is a, a very basic decision tree. We've got everything indented the way we should so we can see what the structure of the decision tree is. We can press calculate. We see our text form of the decision tree. And then in the plot tab, the final decision tree would look like this. So the overall payoff we would expect in this decision would be 9,955,000. Uh, it shows us through the thick, thicker line here that the best option is to sign with a movie company. The expected payoff in this in this set is actually 960,000, but then we have to subtract from that 5,000 for the additional legal cost. So the better option here is to sign with a move company. All right, now suppose we want to see at what point would this decision actually change? It's obviously dependent on the size of the legal fee. So how can we change uh, the value of the legal fee and see how that would change our decision? The simplest way to do this was just change the number. So instead of 5,000, let's say we put in 15,000. Okay. What happens? Let's take a look. No, it's still the case that signing with the movie company is the better option, although the overall payoff here is now less. Uh, instead of 955,000, it's 945,000, which is 960 minus the 15,000 for the legal fees. Okay. So at some point though, we're gonna see a switch. Right? As the legal fee is actually higher and higher, we would expect that at some point somebody would say, well, you know, if you're going to charge me that much extra for the legal fees, I'm going to sign with a TV network, right? That's my, would be my preferred option. So of course we can continue to change this number. Let's say it's, it's very expensive, $75,000 to get these, this contract signed and, and verified and on so Let's calculate to see what the plot is. And indeed, at this point, the better option would be to uh, sign with the TV network. We get 900,000. So this is the simplest way in which you can do some sensitivity analysis. Now, how do I get both of these models into my report? Right, so we have one report, which I'm going to call here initial. Okay, and that would show me that the best option is to sign with a movie company. So I can add this to my report. So click on the report icon. And it'll add here this chunk of code that is referring to the input uh, that we were just looking at. And so let's say I'm going to call that uh, legal B5K. Right. And so there is my output from that particular uh, decision. But now I want a separate piece of code that's going to generate the output for what would happen if the legal fee were 75,000. How would I do that? Right. Let's go back to decision analysis. What we're going to need is another input that has instead of 5,000, 75,000, but I want to keep this as well. Right, keep this initial uh, input as well. Let's change it to 75,000, and now I'm going to change the name of this decision tree to initial 75k. Press calculate, and now you see that there's a new one that's been added to the dropdown. So the initial has 5,000, initial 75k has 75,000. And I want to add that to my report also. Click the report icon, and here is 
to legal fee 75k. Right. Let's click get report. And so here's the output from legal fee 5000. Right. We would expect to use it to sign with the movie company, but at some point, if the legal fee gets high enough, let's say 75,000, then it's actually the better option to sign with the TV, TV network. Right? And we're referring to the second block code chunk, we're referring to the initial 75K tree, and in the first code chunk, we're referring to the initial tree. Okay? All right. So that's the simplest way to set this up. Now, what we can also do is make this a little simpler for us because now right now we're doing this manually and in fact in this in this particular example it's sufficiently simple that we can just figure out exactly what the what the switch over amount would be but i've got a slightly uh perhaps more convenient way to do it so let's click on this tree here that says uh, legal fees and this is part of the state file i'm going to share with you and the only difference versus the first tree that i showed you so first is the initial is that instead of specifying here cost is equal to 5,000, I'm saying cost is equal to legal fees, and here in a section variables, I'm referring to legal fees is equal to 5,000. Right, so specify a section called variables, and I can add a bunch of uh, descriptors here with their values, and those values will then be inputted into the rest of the tree further here down below. Right, so when this is actually run, wherever it says legal fees will be replaced by 5,000 that I entered here. Okay. And I'll explain why this is convenient in a minute. So if I press calculate, it's going to show me input values, legal fees 5,000. I could change this to 75,000, and then it'll recalculate the tree for me. I may be wondering, well, why, what's, the, what's the added value of using this variable section? Well, imagine that the legal fees would actually come back in multiple different spots in the tree. So we had a bigger, more complex tree, then we don't have to actually remember to put in the, the updated value for legal fees all over the place, we just change it in one spot and then it gets changed everywhere. Right? So that's kind of convenient. Now the additional benefit is once I have a variable section that I'm using, I can actually also apply sensitivity analysis. Okay, so this is the sensitivity tab. Here it shows me the decisions that I'm interested in. So I actually have to decide whether I sign with the movie company or not, sign with the TV network, yes or no. And there's an option here to choose legal fees. And I would like to actually recalculate that initial tree multiple times at different values of legal fee. Right. So suppose the lowest end, it, there's no additional legal fee. What would I do? Suppose it was, let's say, 100,000. Okay. So that's the maximum. And I'd like to see this at different steps. So of course, I could do this at every dollar change, but that's going to be quite computationally expensive because it's going to have to do this 100,000 times. So let's say I just say, for every ten thousand dollars, so do uh, zero, do ten thousand, twenty thousand, and so on. Okay, and I want to add this possibility to the box here below. Click the plus, and now here's my command for what I wanted to do: start with zero, go to one hundred thousand in increments of ten thousand, and then press evaluate sensitivity. Right? So it's basically now running the analysis multiple times. And what we see here is now a graph that tells us: well, if there are no legal fees it's definitely better to go with signing with a movie company. But as the legal fees get higher and higher, the curve goes down, and at some point it intersects. Right? It intersects with the line that says, uh, gives us the value of signing with a TV network. Now you can see that that's not affected by the legal fees, because there are no legal fees for this to see. But at some point they interact, and we see that here, for example, suppose that the decision was, uh, what is it, 70,000, or 80,000, then it's actually a better option to choose to sign with the TV network, right? because the value of signing with the movie, net, movie company, if we have this high legal fee, is actually less attractive. Right? And so I can actually go ahead and click Report, and that's gonna add some information here. So this is uh, with variable, I'm just giving it some name. It's actually a similar analysis that's being conducted, but there's also a, a separate command here to uh, create the plot, right? Create the plot for the uh, sensitivity analysis. So let's run that. Oh, sorry about that. Select the section. Just wanted to show you that part. So when it's rerunning the analysis, uh, we're actually starting at 75,000 is what I specified initially. Uh, and then here is the sensitivity analysis that was conducted. Okay. Now, there's one final one that I wanted to show you in decision analysis. 
Uh, there's actually other things that are potentially set that were our decision is sensitive to. So let's talk about the probabilities of getting small box at the medium or large box office. So I've pre-specified one here, which I'm going to call uh, variables. And you'll see this has a slightly larger variables section. So here we still have our legal fees starting at 5,000. And again, we could go into the sensitivity analysis tab and, and, and tell the tool to change that to different values. But it could also change the different probabilities. Right? So our initial probability for small, and I've just specified a label for this, probability of a small box office is 0.3. Probability of a medium box office is 0.6. And then because probabilities obviously have to sum up to one, the probability of a large box office is going to be one minus the probability of small minus the probability of medium. Okay. Now, these labels I'm then placing into the tree where before we had 0.3 typed in directly here. Now we have p small, right? That's referring back to this definition of what p small is. Here we have p medium, which is referring back to p medium here in the variable section and so on. Okay. So now it becomes quite straightforward to evaluate. And let me just run this. It shows here that my input values are as follows. It shows me the decision output and the tree is as before, right? Then nothing has changed there. But what this makes it easy to do, and again, this is more relevant if you have a larger tree with, with the same probabilities coming back multiple times and so on, is let's say that the probability of a medium payoff is actually zero. Right? So it's either going to be 0.3 is a small or 0.7, right? because that's what this is going to amount to, 0.7 for large and zero for medium. What would be the payoff then? Okay, let's take a look at the tree. Well, at that point, it becomes even much more attractive to sign with a movie company, right? Because there's a 0.3 probability of a small box office, but 0.7 of a really large box office. In, in, in which case, we, we clean up, right? We get we get a lot of a lot of payoff. Right? So, how sensitive is the decision to sign with a movie company or not on the probabilities of these different box office uh, returns? Right? So we had 0. 0.7, no, what do you have? 0.6 here before. Oops, 0.6. Right, so that was our initial. And now what I can do, because I've specified both the legal fees and the probability of payoffs as variables here in this section, I can actually also apply sensitivity analysis. And I can just leave the legal fees there for one. So I can actually do both at the same time. I also want to change, uh, see what happens as the probability of a medium payoff changes. Right, so suppose I want that to vary from uh, zero through to 0.7. I'm still have point uh, uh, probability of small payoff is 0.3, so it doesn't make sense to try to make this any bigger than 0.7 because that would add up to one, and in increments of 0.1. All right, so let's add that as another option. So now we're just going to do two sensitivity analyses: one for the legal fees and one for the probability of medium changing. All right. So see how sensitive our, our decisions are to changes in both of those. Press evaluate sensitivity. It's going to do a bunch of different analyses here. And we see that, indeed, it's much more attractive to sign with the movie company if the probability of medium is zero, right? Because then it's 0.3 for small and 0.7 for a large payoff. Whereas if there is a 0.7 probability of a medium payoff and still a 0.3 probability of a small payoff, that means zero probability of a large payoff. In that case, we'd actually be more interested in signing with the TV network. Okay. So this is two sets of sensitivity analysis. I want to add those to my report, say. Uh, let's see, fees and uh, prob probabilities. This is our extra set of sensitivity analyses. Okay. And so here are my results. So this is our initial tree. Get those results, and then we get sensitivity of the tree of the results from that tree based on these two uh, pieces of analysis. I yeah. hope that gives you a bit of a clearer idea of how you could do sensitivity analysis. Again, you don't have to use the sensitivity tab if you don't want to. Uh, of course, if you're not using gradients at all, that means you would have to recalculate the whole thing by hand, which is a bit inconvenient. Using this variable section makes it much more convenient to to run your sensitivity analysis.